Hey everybody, today I want to share my thoughts on Aftershocks headphones. These are open ear bone conduction headphones that are really popular among runners. I have the open run model, but I'm going to keep my comments in this review as general as I can because I think this review will be most helpful for runners who are considering making the switch from standard headphones to open ear headphones like this. In this case, the model isn't so important. I've been using these headphones for over three years now, and I've used them for everything from daily running to ultra marathons. I've really put these things through the ringer, and there's more I have to say about that later. All right, on to the review. Welcome to Aftershocks. Connected. Let's start with the things that I love about these headphones. The obvious place to begin is the open ear concept. It's really nice to be able to hear your surroundings, especially on a trail like this one that's not just used by runners, but also a lot of cyclists. And as you can see, it can get pretty narrow. So it's great to be able to hear if somebody needs to pass. This is especially helpful in race environments. It's there that you'll certainly need to hear not just runners who want to pass, but also race officials, course marshals, and volunteers at aid stations. You can simply press a single button on the left side to pause the music, and you don't have to take anything out of your ears in order to hear someone. Now, there are some things that I don't love about the open ear concept, but I'll save those for later. For now, I wanna continue with a few more things that I do like about these headphones. The second thing I love about these headphones is the battery life. These advertise a battery life of eight hours, which feels about right from my experience. The longest I've ever used these in a single go was around five hours. It was doing a 50K training run leading up to a 100K race. What I learned during this 50K was there's just a limit to how much music or how many podcasts I can listen to. At some point, I just get bored with it all. As far as racing goes, I've never started a race with my headphones on. I always have them in my kit, but they're more or less just there as backup in case I need extra motivation or distraction. So battery life, more than enough. Next, let's talk about comfort. Again, with the open ear design, these things are just inherently unlike anything else out there. I've tried running with things like AirPods or other Bluetooth headphones, but I could never get them to feel secure enough. They always felt like they were on the verge of falling out. I think Aftershocks has really nailed it with this design and the technology. It's just really nice to not have something sticking in your ear. The device itself is also really firm, so it doesn't bounce as you run with it. At the same time, it's not too firm to the point that it becomes uncomfortable. Once you have the device on, you can really just listen to the music or podcast you want without thinking of the device at all. Using the headphones is also very easy. But in order to save some time here, I've created a separate video where I walk through all the controls in detail. I'll link to that video below. For now, I'll give you just a quick overview of the controls and the layout. I'll refer to these in terms of your perspective as you wear them. So we'll start on the right side here on this back piece. If you flip over the headphones, you'll see there's the charging connection. These headphones come with two proprietary chargers. Proprietary chargers are kind of an annoying thing because you have to use a very specific cable, but at least they give you two. Then you'll also see there are two buttons on this piece. The front button is the power on button. This one also doubles as one of the two volume buttons. This forward button is the one you'll use to increase the volume and the rear button decreases the volume. The only other thing on the right side is the little built-in microphone on this forward piece. We'll talk about that in a little bit. On the left side, you just have a single button on this front piece that's used to pause the music as well as skip tracks. You can skip forward as well as backward. Back to the open ear design and what I don't like about it. Like I said before, when you're on a quiet trail like this, they're perfect. But as soon as you find yourself in a noisy environment, they kind of suck. I mostly run into this problem in two scenarios. The first is when I'm running around the city and I'm not on the trails. Anytime I'm near a busy street, I really can't listen to podcasts because if a bus goes by or a bunch of cars, you'll just miss part of the conversation. Music you can get away with because you know the songs, it's not so bad if you miss a verse or something like this. The other scenario where I run into this problem is my commute to work. I use a subway 
system and it can get quite loud. And in that scenario, these headphones just aren't good. You want ideally something noise canceling or at a minimum, something that actually goes in your ears. Okay, let's talk really briefly about making phone calls with these headphones. As I mentioned earlier, they do have a built-in microphone, so they are capable of this, but they're not very good at it. The problem that we run into is the same thing as I mentioned earlier with listening to podcasts. If you happen to be in a noisy environment, it's not ideal at all. It'll be really hard to hear the other person on the end of the line. Likewise, this microphone isn't the best. If there's a lot of noise around you, they might have a hard time hearing you. So if this is an important feature for you to be able to make a phone call or take a phone call without getting your phone out, I don't think these are the headphones for you. Price-wise, a pair of Aftershocks will run you between $80 and $180. The Open Run model that I have on is $130. If you opt for the higher end model, then you'll get a 10 hour battery life instead of eight and supposedly better audio quality. But in my opinion, the Open Run is more than enough. The battery life is great, the price is okay, and I think if you're truly an audiophile, you're probably not considering open-ear headphones. Next, let's talk durability. One question that comes up a lot with these headphones is, can I wear them in the rain? All Aftershocks are rated as water resistant or better. They say on their website that the Open Run and another model are waterproof, but in any case, they don't recommend that these be submersed in water. But I can say from my experience, I've worn them in all kinds of rain, including very heavy rain, and I've never experienced any issues with them. On the topic of durability, I have run into one issue. Now, like I said in the intro of this video, I have put these headphones through the ringer. I have worn them in all kinds of weather. I throw them recklessly into my backpack. So I abuse them a bit. And I think as a result, I had an issue with my first pair here that isn't completely uncommon. So what happened is in each of these front compartments, a piece has become loose and now it rattles around. I'll demonstrate real quick how this rattling sounds in my broken set compared to how it should sound. Hear that? It should be silent. According to some forum research that I did, you might be able to send such a pair back to the company for a repair or a replacement, but I've moved to Germany in the meantime and I don't have the receipt, so I didn't go down that route. Another option that people put out there was to try to repair it yourself, to open up this compartment and try to glue it back in place yourself. This would certainly violate any warranties you have, and I think if I tried something like that, it would probably only make matters worse. So try it at your own risk. Aside from this rattling issue, these headphones work just fine. So today I still use them almost every day for all kinds of activities where they won't rattle, like Zoom calls or household chores. I hope this isn't a common issue. It hasn't happened yet on my second pair, but if it does, I will give an update in a comment below. To wrap it up, I think these headphones are really perfect for trail running and long distance trail running at that. So if you're planning on doing a lot of off-road training or racing this year, they're definitely a great addition to your kit. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you next time.